Is that yep, working? I can do that. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, firstly, hello everybody. Great to great, great to be here, and I look forward to taking you through this um, uh, presentation today. All right. If you could just let me know that you can see that. Wonderful. Thank you. Let me just uh, adjust all the faces in my screen. Great. Okay. Wonderful. So let's get uh, started. So today is very much about the whole attracting more customers with a powerful brand. So I just wanted to get started with um, a little intro first. So yes, I'm Artie Palmer. I'm a, I'm a brand strategist, personal performance coach, and a brand designer. Um, at the age of 24, I ran a creative agency in uh, Malaysia. And whilst I was there for, for 10 years, um, we ended up working with one-man brands to global brands. And it was multi-sectors from property developers, FMB, health, um, you name it, we probably touched it at uh, some point or another. Um, and I've just, you know, over the years, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of businesses creating authentic and meaningful brands and really helping uh, business owners to mindfully take ownership of their brand because I very much truly believe if a brand is not clear on the inside it will not be clear on the outside. So having worked with um, you know like I said hundreds of businesses what I have found um, and this also applies for myself you know what business owners actually want and that is to to know how to appeal to their relevant target audience you know they want to make sales they want to make money they want to create brand awareness through through marketing they want to be known as the either the go-to person product or service that they're offering um, they want to have momentum and growth in their business sometimes you know some of them want to you know eventually exit and sell and that kind of thing and also you know they want to know that they are making a positive difference with all the businesses that uh, you know I've, I've worked with you know nobody sets up a business like uh, in, in the whole thing of like oh well you know I'll just I'll just do this for for money um, it is there is more to it when, when you delve in a bit deeper and it is to make some sort of uh, positive difference or be some sort of um, better influence so why do you need powerful branding one it helps you to stand out it helps you to differentiate you from your competitors and gets your message across effectively you know if everyone's saying the same thing uh you know all, all your competitors are saying the same thing you know you're just gonna blend in um it helps you to you know for people to identify identify you and it helps to create a more meaningful connection you know now we are in this digital world digital um era where we are you know basically we're globally connected so you know people want connection and it's it's becoming even more and more important in in that sense so how do you know if you have powerful branding people start recognizing your style you know if, if, if everything looked the same obviously you know it, it's hard to identify but you know i'm sure there are particular you know brands that you just know if i if i was to take off the logo and you saw I don't know, uh, their, their stuff on social media um, or you're reading a magazine or something or, or saw an ad in a newspaper, you know, for example, if I was to take off the Apple logo from their communications, I'm pretty sure you would recognize their style. Um, you know, people start responding to your marketing and you are experiencing results and outcomes. So, you know, this might be that people are, you know, they're, they're, they're inquiring, they're, they're, they're making inquiries, you're getting referrals from maybe, um, you know your your networking community or you know other other business uh, other businesses that you work with you're also maybe um getting asked to do talks and write articles uh, people want to interview you so you know there's a variety of different things that you'll be experienced when when you know that you have a powerful brand uh, branding in in place so what does powerful branding actually consist of it consists of clear messaging. There is consistency. You know, it's not on one platform you're this, and then on another platform you're that. It needs to all seamlessly be be uh, saying the same thing, looking the same way, and having a consistent message that goes across all of your different platforms and channels. It has clear positioning. Um, I'll be sharing examples, by the way, of all of these things later um, as we go through the presentation. 
it connects, it connects to an, an emotion. You know, it's, it's no longer just about being a product or a service led business. It is about being a brand that has meaning and meaning connects with emotion. Um, it speaks to the audience of your mind. It speaks to the mind of your audience, shall I say. Um, and that, you know, again, comes into the, the emotion part of, you know, what your brand is, is all about. It has its own unique style and creates a bit of a brand experience. So where does powerful branding actually come from to achieve all of those different things that I've just gone through? Where does that actually come from? It comes from defining your brand and defining your brand helps you to stay on track. It helps you to be on brand and it helps you to really under, set, set you apart from you know, your competitors and just generally in, in the market. Where does that all, all come from? What is a brand? The brand is the sum of everything that you stand for. And these, this involves your brand purpose, your, your, or some people like to call it your why or your mission. You know, this is, and I'm sure you may have heard this plenty of times before, but it's more than the reason of just wanting to generate money, you know, make, make money from your business. This is the why you are actually doing what you are doing. What, what makes you tick? What, why, what's that real driver behind uh, why your business exists and why your brand exists? And then it's your brand values. You know, what, 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 why do you manage the things that you do in the way that you do? And understanding your values drives and helps to really create an authentic and meaningful brand. You know, it's, it's how, how, what is it that you would not stand for in your business is also part of your values. You know, how you come across, how you want to be seen and known. So, you know, if it is that kind of the, the innovative kind of business, you know, how does that come across in, in your values? And do you actually showcase that, you know, this isn't just about a word, it's, it's more than that. It's about living it out, acting it out, breathing it out. Um, vision, you know, you may have heard of that saying, begin with the end in mind, the whole Stephen Covey thing, you know, what are you actually working towards as a brand? You know, we don't, I know a lot of you are established businesses, you know, so there is, you know, that there's, it's not about just, Right. How, how are we doing at the end of the month? It's what is that bigger vision and tying that in with the business model. And that's also then going to tie into your marketing communications and the whole actually the infrastructure of of the business, uh, knowing who you want to who you want to serve. You know, who is that target audience getting really clear on their needs, desires, fears? You know, there, there is, I know some of you are B2B, some of you are B2C, but actually at the end of the day, we are all H to H, we're human to human. We are liaising with another human being um, and they are, you know, knowing and understanding what their challenges are. So by understanding really clearly and defining those challenges that these businesses that you are working with or people that you are, you know, serving, what are those things? Because again, that's going to be part of how you position your brand. And um, brand per personality, just like a human has a personality, a brand has a personality, you know, and that's that's the essence of, of, of the brand and what gives it its uh, real kind of characteristics. Um, and, you know, there is there is more to, to defining your brand, but these are like sort of some core basics um, that, that I'm sharing with you, you know, I go through a whole sort of 10 step brand framework, but these are some, some of the key, key things. If these are not in place, like I said, you know, it's all about being, having the clarity um, inwardly. So then you can go out outwardly with confidence. So just to clarify, brand and what that is, uh, brand is what you stand for and what you want to be known for. And branding is the representation of what you stand for visually and through words. So I'm just going to hone in more into the branding aspect because people, a lot of people get brand and branding mistaken. And it's really, really important to understand that it's two different things and they both need each other. But where it actually comes from, branding is your logo, your font, you know, your color palette, imagery, messaging, tone of voice, all of that. But in order to get to branding, Brand needs to be understood and really clearly defined. So I'm going to run a little um, exercise uh, with you right now. And um, I've, I've actually 
shown this particular slide and done this exercise in when we were allowed, you know, in 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 person uh, events in in rooms, you know, uh, where there's been over hundreds of people. Um, I've done this on one to one workshops, of different different discovery um, brand discovery sessions and stuff like that. And what I would usually do if I was like a, you know, if I was in the room, I'd get people to, um, I'd ask people to put their hands up if they think that these brands have been successful because of their logo. And I actually will get a handful of hands that will be like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, definitely, definitely, or all of that. But actually, what I want, my first message is that it is a brand that gives a logo meaning, not a logo that gives a brand meaning. So just to give you an example, if, you know, we all know Google, right? But had we, if we didn't know Google and what it, you know, what it does and what it stands for, and I just showed you the logo, it would actually mean nothing to you. So it's really important to understand that it is a brand that gives a logo meaning, not a logo that gives a brand meaning. So let's do a little exercise now. Um, I'm gonna say a few of these brands and what I'd like you to put in the chat, and Neil, if you could just read out, um, read out these um, as, as people are uh, typing it out. So first one, John Lewis, what words do you associate with their brand? Right, so we're getting quality. Well, we've had four qualities so far. I put fair as well, because I know that they have a, <clears throat> their, their structure is about that. We've got employee owned, partners, good customer service, mm -hmm. uh, Christmas, yeah, I suppose the adverts of uh, the guy who invented the John Lewis Christmas adverts went to Cardiff University, a friend of mine. Oh. Fun fact. I mean, not so fun, but uh, luxury, quality, good service, good quality, reliability, service, retail online, quality, never knowingly undersold. And someone else, yeah, instantly two people put never look. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff around quality there, luxury, good quality, you know, good customer service, that kind of thing. Brilliant, brilliant. Fantastic. Right now, if I say um, Chanel, what comes to mind? What words do you associate with their brand? Uh, okay, so we have premium, glamour, luxury, expensive, premium, luxury. These are all just words people think of when they think about my personal brand as Neil Cocker, obviously. <laughs> Fashion, uh, luxury, luxury, black, someone has written. High end, affluence, premium. Yep. There okay. You go. Um, Apple. What words do okay. you say? Oh, yeah. Sophisticated for Chanel. Well, right. Apple. Good design. iPad. Stylish. Cutting edge. Tech. Tech. Intuitive. Innovative. Intuitive. Modern slash tech. Innovation. And uh, Fionn Wright has written world domination. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Love it. Love it. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, Let's do one last one. Neil Cocker. Oh, God. I've <laughs> always <laughs> oh, set myself up for who? Yeah. Jack Davis exactly has said exactly that. That is a completely fair. So I think that will, uh, yeah, somebody else has written who. Oh, Sarah has kindly put reliable. But anyway, there we go. No, 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 no need to go any further deep. <laughs> you, you did step into that, sorry, Neil. <laughs> yeah, it's totally my fault. Wonderful. Look, do you know what? I Like I said, I've run this exercise numerous times. And I kid you not, John Lewis, every single time people have said quality, reliability, service, um, Chanel, expensive, premium, um, affluent, uh, luxury, Apple, they've said innovative, stylish, design. And to me, you know, this, this is no coincidence. It really isn't, you know, to me, this is what all, this is what a brand is about. You know, in, in very simple terms, I say a brand is a created perception. If there's one thing you take away from today's presentation is to remember that a brand is a created perception. And all of these brands, what they have done over time, they have created perceptions in our mind for us to intentionally, for us to think about them in the way 
that we do to associate these words with them. You know, everything that they have done is with intention. They've wanted us to think of them as John Lewis, as reliable quality. You know, these, these are, you know, simple words, but actually for, for us to think about them in that way, they've done through their marketing, through their advertising, through their communications, through their processes, systems, infrastructure, you know, they've been able to deliver that. So, you know, it, there's, there's really a lot of depth into um, building a brand and being known for what it is that you want to be known for. So when, you know, this question comes up, it's like, ah, you know, you've associated quality, reliability. I didn't tell you to do that, nor did I give you any hints. This is how you have seen the brand because they have intentionally wanted us to see them in this way. So um, just to give you, you know, an example of that actually in play. So, you know, with, with Apple, it's not just about their logo, you know, they've created an operating system. And as a result of the operating system, it, it gives us, you know, this whole sort of innovation in, in as part of our lives as well. You know, uh, when you go into a retail store, they've created a certain kind of experience that we have you know um I, I don't know about you i absolutely love going into an apple retail store you know i, I love the sort of that they, they come up for me they've come across really sort of friendly chatty and you know that's that's again intentional culture that they've created within their workspace you know they want the staffs to be that way you know from even the way that they dress they've got a very casual informal you know in t-shirts that kind of um approach and also when you then go onto the website it is very sort of stylish, sleek, uh, clean, simple, you know, that, that's uh, part of their user journey. So hence, you know, us thinking about them in the way we do. And it's a combination of things then which makes a brand recognizable, unique, reputable, credible, memorable, trusted, and it helps to gain that loyalty. It's a variety of different things that creates perceptions in our minds, which then obviously, you know, creates beliefs. So just a little um, exercise for you. Um, um, you know, it's just something for you to think about. You don't need to put this into the chat box right now because, you know, again, this is, you know, it's it. But just I want you to have a think about what three words would you like people to associate with your brand? If I was to pull up this slide and had your branding on, on, on that, um, you know, what, what three words would you like people to be actually saying um, about your business brand? So your goal as a business is to integrate your brand into every aspect of your business and communications. So I'm just going to share some examples of other brands that are doing this, some big brands, some small brands. Um, so I'm going to start off with, with Nike. So, you know, at the core of their business, so around their sort of mission and purpose and stuff like that, for them, it's to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. If you have a body, you are an athlete. And, you know, I think that's absolutely genius. But have you noticed, you know, they're not saying, you know, we're known for, you know, trainers, we want to provide you with uh, clothing and apparel and stuff like that. What they are saying is we want to bring inspiration and innovation. So if you go across all of their uh, marketing uh, channels and stuff like that, their social media, um, you know, different campaigns that they've created over time, the collaborations that they've done with different um, sport athletes and, you know, at the core of it, it is always about inspiration and innovation. So, you know, what's at the core of your business it's really important to understand that because that's the overarching that that's going to sit so regardless of whether you have uh sub brands uh, you know you have multi products or multi services what is that at the core of the business this is another great example that I, I came across and it's called beauty kitchen and obviously they do you know uh beauty uh products but what makes them different you know there's there's it's such a saturated market, isn't it? The whole sort of beauty thing. But, you know, what is it that actually makes them different and why they've started their business? Because it, for them, they care. They really care about, you know, the whole sort of sustainability um, aspect of things and, you know, being cruelty free and stuff like that. But they've taken it even that one step further. They, For them, they what they want to do is actually create a movement. And that movement is about to, uh, it's the reuse revolution and this is what gives them part of their competitive advantage in in that sense and also coming back to that meaningful connection you know being a consumer 
of a brand like this, you're going to feel good. You're going to feel like, oh, actually, I'm, I'm part of a movement that's going to make a difference in, in this world. You know, and even when you land on their website, they're not showcasing, oh, this is all our products. This is all our services. You know, a lot of businesses tend to do just that. Um, and that is more about being a product and service led brand, whereas this is being more of a purpose led brand. So you can see that, um, you know, join the reuse revolution. We're on a mission to create the most sustainable beauty products in the world. As a consumer, I would have immediately feel like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing good by purchasing this, this product. They care about the environment and that kind of thing. So, you know, if that sits in with somebody's values, you're going to, you know, they're going to be pulling in a market in, in this sense. Um, and I really love the fact that um, they've got a, a page around, you know, their, their founder and just in, in this short snippet of text, there's, there's so much here, you know, voted number two in the, in the who's who of natural beauty. Uh, meet our founder, sustainability expert, chemist, herbal botanist and mum. She's pioneering change in beauty and the global circular economy. That's really powerful, you know, just, just those few words. And, you know, that to me says the person behind this brand, you know, really cares. They really want to, there's a real sort of mission behind them and there's a real drive and you know I'm, I'm not only buying the product I'm buying into this this other you know movement and the person who actually you know really believes in this and you've got to remember you know now that we are in this digitally connected world you, you no longer can just be uh, a you know a face that's hiding behind the company brand you know people want to know the person behind the brand so there are three types of brand there's your personal brand your company brand. So in this case, Joe is the personal brand. Company brand is the um, beauty kitchen. And then you've got product brand. So that's all the different products or services that one, one offers. Um, so, you know, having an understanding of, of all of those and bringing them to, to the forefront. So people start connecting with the brand on a human level. Um, this is another great example um, of, of um, you know, a, a brand working from its core. Innocent, tastes good, does good. You know, for them, it's very much about tasty, healthy products, uh, sourced sustainably again, and 10% of their profits go, go, to, go to charity. But what I really like about um, Innocent and how they've differentiated and are attracting their customers, it's, you know, they, they've built their own sort of personality around their their brand so again if you was to look at some of their communications you go onto their uh website or their um social media it's actually very it's it's very quirky it's fun um you know it's it's vibrant it's fresh and they're very sort of current with what's going what's going on so they're listening they're listening to what's going on in generally in, in the world, in the market, that kind of thing. And they're talking to that. So that's another great way of, you know, being, being uh, in front of your consumers and connecting with them. And this doesn't only just have to happen um, on the B2C level. It can happen on a B2B. You know, the, you may need a bit more depth to understand what that is. Um, but, you know, there is ways of staying current and um in front of your target audience in, in that way. But, you know, in terms of brand personality, I think Innocent has a really great way of showcasing um, their, their brand personality through their communications. And even like when you land on their, their website, again, like I said, very vibrant, um, bright and, and, and fun and that kind of thing. And even, even their ads, you know, you, this is again coming back to when I mentioned about tone of voice and the messaging behind it you know they're, they're very sort of clever with what what they are doing doing here so you know they're not just like oh yeah we've got these products which are the dairy free they've actually created a little game around it that 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 sort of thing a flow chart thing so you know just there's, there's ways of being clever with um, your your marketing and uh, communication that sits with you know the the brand style in in that sense um now i'm just going to share a bit more of a a uh, smaller brand and it's actually more of an experience that, that I had that um, I feel will be useful also to, to take into consideration. Um, so a few weeks ago I was looking for a meditation cushion and as you do you know you start looking on 
Google. So, you know, from Google, I, you know, had lots of different options. And then I was like, right, okay, let me go over to found, found this particular business called uh, Be Mindful, Be Happy, went over to their Instagram. And I was just like, oh, wow, this is great. And then I went back to their website. And now I'm reading their, um, you know, I've, I've even nearly forgotten that I wanted to buy a meditation cushion, because now I'm drawn in by their articles, their blogs, the things that they're sharing about their, their, um, business and the kind of uh, things that they are doing as 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 a brand so which you know and i was thinking what, what actually pulled me in um to to buy from this particular brand as opposed to you know another one and it was around their brand values it was you know they're they're, they're very much about inspiring kindness compassion curiosity and that aligns with some of my my values in in that sense and you know when you have brand values and people connect with those values, they will align to it. And therefore you, again, like I was saying earlier, you pull that kind of crowd in. So something I want you to take into consideration, you know, um, what are people buying into when they buy from your brand? You know, what do you want them to actually feel? Um, and, you know, and like I said, this, this can apply also to B2B because, you know, you are, helping them in some way to overcome something to, you know, to, uh, to um, find a solution for something. But what is that feeling that they're going to have, whether it's as a business, whether it's, you know, as, as the, the marketing team or whatever, who, whoever that is that you are um, providing to. And how do you communicate that in your content? That content might be your website, your proposals, your social pages, your LinkedIn posts, those kind of things. Um, and remember, it's, you know, it's, it's not about don't sell the product, sell the meaning. So I'm just going to share um, an example of, you know, when you're not attracting the right customers and when branding isn't quite working for you. So I had this uh, client and I'm, now I'm showing like a really much more smaller brand. But in all my examples, everything applies, whether you're a big brand, small brand, um, the fundamentals are there. So this particular client of mine, uh, she came to me and she was like, oh, well, see, do you know what? I do a lot of networking and, you know, do some of my marketing and all of that kind of thing. And um, what happens is that I do get inquiries and I go to people's homes. She does soft furnishings and stuff. Um, and I end up wasting a lot of time because I you know, measure up. Um, I have spent all that time. Um, and then when I send a proposal, it's always too expensive. You know, um, they, they, it's an immediate kind of rejection. So we looked and it looked into her brand and actually getting a better understanding around her positioning, you know, what, 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 again, around her values and all of those kind of things. But most importantly, you know, understanding also that the fact the the partners she was working with in order to deliver, they were premium suppliers. So her price was actually, you know, it was showcasing that. Whereas when you look at her, this was her business card and it was on her website and stuff like that. When I've asked this in, in a, you know, in interactive room, people have said that actually looks a bit like a bedroom business. You know, it looks a bit tacky, um, one man band kind of thing. And actually, she's been in this industry for over 20 years. Um, very knowledgeable, very professional, very elegant. And but this just doesn't come across in, in that way. So the solution after doing a brand workshop and stuff with her, you know, it we then, I then created this, which was, gave her a whole different look and feel and a different kind of confidence, actually, if I'm really honest, to, to go out with. Um, Grace of Furnishings, we changed the name. Gray was actually her grandmother's name. And, uh, you know, we brought that into the story part of the, the brand as well. Um, and now she's getting, you know, inquiries from desired clients, higher paying clients. She's had business growth and she's really taken ownership of of her brand and what, what she stands for, you know, so this is the power of really understanding um, your, your brand in, in that sense. And you know, I've got loads and loads of examples, but I can't uh, share all of them in uh, 30 minutes. So one of the key mistakes I see people, uh, business owners making is that when they start a business, um, you know, it's usually out of enthusiasm and stuff, you know, it's like, yeah, well, you know, I know I've got something great and I want to get it out there. And, and it's been a case of, right, let's get our logo done. Let's get our website done and we'll, we'll then go and do all the marketing. But actually, the sequence should be that you need to define your brand first, because then that's going to lead into your brand identity, which then leads into the, the um, 
websites and then all your messaging, the branding side, all of that, you know, then can be put into that. And then that goes into your marketing. And in order to define your brand, it's about asking these important questions. You know, there, there's, there's, like I said, there's much more to it than, than just this, but, you know, having those kind of questions of why you exist as a brand, what is your brand purpose? Who is your target audience? What are you helping people achieve when they buy or when they use your product or service? What creates your unique factor? What does your brand look like and how does it speak? These things, this isn't a one-off exercise. You know, I work with businesses that are startups that to 81 years old, uh, you know, and multi-sectors from law, law firms to tech to um, F&B to service, a lot of service-based businesses. And throughout that journey, you know, things we evolve, trends evolve, um, you know, our products and services evolve. So it's really, really important to keep going back to defining your your brand, but having a solid brand foundation is, is really key. Um, you know, I know probably some of you, um, as you mentioned, have been established for, for quite a number of years. And I'm sure, you know, you can say that actually my business looks very different from day dot one to, to where, where you are now. So really, really important to, you know, to define your brand regardless of wherever you are in that journey, because then this is how you're going to then be able to really utilize um, effectively the different channels and platforms that are available to us. You know, we've got amazing places to now reach out. You know, it's not limited. We, it's amazing now how many things we can, how many, you know, places, people, uh, businesses we can actually be reaching out to. So it's, it's not about marketing. Now it's about marketing your brand and getting that across in a meaningful way that really, really does talk to your audience's mind. And even if that means narrowing it down to instead of reaching, I don't know, the million, but, you know, actually you're just reaching the hundred thousand that you know are really much more specific to your particular product or service, that's, this is then, you know, where you're going to get that kind of um, buy-in from people that actually want to need your products or services. So here's just a little um, checklist that I've uh, put together um, and it's called Clarity, Create, Communicate. Just This is just a little um, thing. So, you know, you have something to go away with, you know, in order to get the clarity, you need to define your brand, purpose, values, vision and all the other brand uh, attributes or revisit them um, and, you know, really understand, you know, what is your product and service that you are offering, you'll be quite surprised. There'll be times where people are not absolutely clear. And if you're not clear on that, then how are you going to put that out there into the market? And who does it serve and why do they need it? You know, what are the, the fears, the desires, the needs of your uh, relevant target audience? Because once you have that, then you can start creating the brand identity or refreshing it or rebranding the website, you know, put the key messages together, get the social pages done, the designs, uh, your graphic design and you know put really put content together because then that's how you can then communicate you know communicate the value you bring the outcomes people have build on that personal brand as well especially if you're doing um more sort of social media stuff showcase showcase that expertise and knowledge like where we saw for beauty kitchen joe um and really you know show that kind of social proof so you know if you're getting asked to be that expert speaker within your industry that's show, social proof you know if you're then sort of you do a talk whether it's a webinar kind of thing and then you showcase it on a linkedin group page or um you know the team are showcasing it for you you know your team are also your brand's voice as well so you know there's a lot more depth in 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 that as well in terms of creating brand culture within so having that understanding of your brand will help you to be much more relatable it will help you to for you to have alignment um you know alignment in in the sense of you know some businesses do have partners um so you know making sure everybody is on that same page because you know again even the internal team needs to be on that page and be aligned with the whole brand makes it authentic makes it meaningful um gives the brand you know confidence when i say confidence not just about putting a social media post out there and being confident in doing that confidence in knowing that this is what we want to be known for this is how we want to be seen this is what um you know, we deliver and do. And, you know, having that fulfillment, you know, at the end of the day, we want to, you know, enjoy 
running a business and making a difference in people's lives and people's businesses and you know being being able to to impact i really truly believe a brand is a vehicle to serve grow and impact and you know we all have the ability to to fulfill that so i'm going to leave you with some actions what i would like you to do is the first one is actually go into that exercise what three words describe your brand and what what a good thing uh, what thing what a good thing to do would be is ask your you know if you've got business partners ask your partners ask your team ask your customers you might want to just put a little survey together ask your suppliers you know and it, or it just might be in conversation you know you're you're talking to to somebody and just say actually what three words would you use to describe my 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 business brand you can even just say i was on this uh, webinar on brand and you know they, they've asked me to do this um, and, and see what you get back and when you get these back ask yourself is that is that what we want to be known for is that how I want to be seen um, if it is you know is that coming across also in your communications if it's not then you also need to you know think about what is it that you do want to be known for as a brand um, question number two is what are your brand what are your brand values and are they clearly integrated into the website for example your social media pages your communications culture because you know brand values isn't just about words it's about how you live them and you know that you are successfully living your brand values when somebody reflects them back to you so if you are saying that you know as as a brand um uh, excellence is really important to us and then in a testimonial or something, you know, somebody has reflected that back in some way or when somebody's given you a referral and, you know, how is it that you're going to ensure that you are successfully living these brand values? So, again, something to do with your your team, because it's it's you know, it's important to, for everyone to be on that same page because you want them to be living your um, brand values, too. But in order for them to live it, you need to know it as well. Yeah. So that's it from me. And like I always say, the way to go outwards with confidence is to go inwardly for clarity. So thank you very much. I'll stop sharing the screen now. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Artie. That was, uh, yeah, made me ask a lot of questions on my own business. And we'll, uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. If anyone has any questions, put them in the chat now. Uh, we'll come to those uh, as they come in. Um, I'm very shortly going to share a link as well so you can book a 15-minute session with RT if you want. Um, yeah, so uh, questions in the chat, and I'll, I'll read those out to RT. I'll start off, actually. So one thing that I was thinking of is, you know, that, that three words um, exercise, which I think is really powerful, you know. Um, for me... I know the three words, you know, if, if I were to write down in one column the three words I want my business to or want to be associated with my business or I want my customers to believe of with my business, I think they'd be very different to what they are now, right? So that brings into mind, like, should I be rebranding? Should I or be reassessing? What does that look like? Is there a way of knowing whether, I mean, maybe I've answered my own question by saying, look, the three words that exist there aren't the three words that I think people would say of me now, is that a good reason for rebranding? Are there any other thoughts on rebranding about uh, that I should take into mind, uh, take into account? Yeah, I mean, um, with the three words, you know, you can sort of look at them and, and think about them and think, okay, actually, is that coming across in in my communications? Do people, um, you know, get me for get us for for this? And if it's not, then yes, you know, you can start thinking about actually, do I need to just kind of retweak, refresh the messaging that that's uh, going out there? Or do I need to do a whole overhaul of a rebrand? Because actually, there's a really big disconnect between who we think we are as a brand, who people think we are as a brand, and what's actually going on. And in between, there's a whole mishmash of messaging and this this I find you know more with the established businesses over time um, because they start growing 
and you know that their head's pretty much in the business and somebody else is handling some of the marketing and stuff like that so it all gets a little bit um a bit of a, a mishmash going on and also the other thing is that if they're thinking of like actually we're, we're ready to grow we, you know we want to grow a bigger team we want to um take it to the next level but right now our branding shows us as a much smaller entity uh whereas you know they do want to be seen as a a, a much bigger maybe like a global kind of uh brand in that sense so you know that's to do with the messaging the visuals the positioning um, oh, that headings and hems one you showed before yeah i mean that very much the the image on the left was a was a one person band a, a, a backroom business a, a, yeah a, a part time hustle i suppose um yeah and i can see how the repositioning of that very clearly made them more ambitious and or aligned with their ambitions i suppose mm, absolutely absolutely right um and what do people what do what do businesses get wrong when it comes to uh branding what are the what are the mistakes that you often see um and you know how can we avoid those yeah uh the the most sort of common ones is is that whole thing of um where they just jump in two feet two feet in and i need to get a logo done and and they're, they're just thinking brand is logo color fonts and they've not really looked into that that brand foundation and defined the the brand and what i find with those businesses they end up sort of going for a year two years three years and then hitting a bit of a a roadblock and then they sort of feel a bit confused overwhelmed directionless where am i heading with all of this you know is it working not making money um so you know it, it, it and for me that comes down to very much um defining the the brand looking at the purpose vision values and if they're in it for the long term you know that that's something that does need to be in place right yeah yeah yeah. It's, they, it's, they, um, have that, they have the stat don't they is it um 80 of businesses fail in the first no first year and then 50 in yeah the there's, there's a million different ways to measure it but fundamentally yes m most businesses fail that's the, the the sort of headline right so that's a scary headline for all of us and it's it's quite interesting you know i um a lot of the work i do with with various clients is around helping them sell a product that solves a problem for the customer i think a lot of businesses define a uh, product that they think is a good idea but don't necessarily and, and you know it, it comes back to the thing you were sort of saying about you know um define your brand first rather than trying to sell something that doesn't necessarily align with that i, I remember it almost exactly word for word of what you were saying i was having a discussion with someone a while back about apple and apple has become synonymous with quality because they define themselves by that rather than apple itself being a particularly strong brand i mean Apple is a very boring name. And also the Beatles is the world's most boring name for a band. And yet they're synonymous with the greatest band, you know. Um, so, yeah, that, that's interesting that actually we, we, we need to go a bit more inward before we start, you know, uh, yeah. showing yeah, that, that's stuff. another thing. I, you know, I come across a lot of businesses that will be like, they'll, they'll spend like three months or whatever thinking about the name. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, like I say, it, it's a it's a brand that gives a logo and a name meaning. Google means yeah. nothing to nobody. You know, even as they a name. Spend, yes, they spend so much time. This was exactly the conversation I was having. A friend was trying to name his business, and I was like, "It's really not as important as you think it is." Like, you know, of course, that's not to say you don't make your best efforts to not come up with something terrible mm. and offensive. But it, but the, <laughs> you know, the, it's not the it's not the the defining thing. Um, folks, if you have last chance to put any questions in the chat, I've put the link for a, a, a chat with RT in there. Otherwise, I'll ask um, sort of one last question of RT. I mean, it, it was it was interesting you said about that human to human thing. That was that really struck a chord with me because I think how do you how do you make that work when you have bluntly a very boring product? So say that you are a steel manufacturing firm and, you know, you have uh, five, 10 million turnover, you've got a bunch of people working for you, but fundamentally what you do 
has no personality, has no character. There's not an, e an, an easy and obvious way to, to do that. What is there something to do with those businesses or is that just like, you, you know, you, uh, yeah. What, yeah. What's... I mean, so, you know, even being in, 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 in that field, you're still going to be liaising with another human. Mm -hmm. And when you're, say, doing a contract and, you know, it's a 20 million deal contract or whatever it is, how are you making that person feel? Yes, that's the product that, that's going to be sold or contracted and stuff. But what they are buying into is what the person says they are going to be delivering it. And, you know, there is that connection, um, you know, so that, that as, as uh, the steel brand, um, what might be important to them as a brand is, you know, the, I don't know, the, the, the process, the delivery that, that they do to make sure that that deal goes ahead and that, you know, that that's mm -hmm. compared to another, their, one of their competitors who doesn't really care about the delivery part because, oh, it's a deal, let's just get it done. But company A, steel company A, that's, you know, everybody that's involved, you know, in, in that, um, they, it's really important to them that there is, uh, you know, very, um, I don't know, the process, the, the, the delivery sure. is, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. really detailed and, you know, that that's how it works. I suppose, yeah, I mean, that those kind of things would work in mega, mega budget construction projects. And so that's timely, reliable, you know, all that's quality is going to be, yeah. So I suppose there's always going to be on that basic level, like however you do the exercise is what three words or, you know, it, again, every, every company, no matter the mo most boring, the humans either side of the supply chain are always going to feel like they need something from you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can imagine yourself, you know, and a, a lot of maybe some of these businesses here are going in for tenders. So, you know, if they get that opportunity or in, in their proposal, there is something that highlights something about their values and how they, what's important to them as, as a brand or, you know, they, they stand for a certain movement or purpose. And as a result of that uh, company buying into this, they're helping the world with, you know, saving the ocean or I don't know, something along those kind of lines that, that could be, a, you know. Great. Fantastic. Right. Well, we wrap up there then folks. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Uh, we'll finish here uh, and yeah, Friday is going to be a talk with Digi Waters about um, innovation and spotting trends so that you can jump on those next trends. So if you uh, drop me an email uh, on neil at neilcocker.com, if you haven't had an invite for that, or if you want to get on the newsletter for the events, but that's going to be a really, really good event. I'm really excited about that. Anything that, that's, you know, and obviously the world is changing rapidly right now. So there are uh, lots and lots of opportunities being thrown up in the world uh to uh to take advantage of as businesses um great so feel free uh class dismissed ask if you can stick around uh, that makes me sound like a you know i want to have a word with you about your homework uh, and great and we'll uh, i'll see everyone uh hopefully at one of the upcoming events cheers everyone thanks very much thank you bye-bye